I am Professor Isha Madhuratha. In today's video, we are going to start a very important topic of the chapter that is known as equilibrium carrier statistics. Now, what do you mean by equilibrium carrier statistics? Here, we are going to discuss the carrier concentration of semiconductors. Carrier concentration means what are the number of electrons with respect to certain volume present in conduction band. Similarly, what are the number of holes with respect to a certain volume present in valence band? And we are going to discuss these topics for intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors separately. Also, we are going to discuss about Fermi level variation. So, let's see what equilibrium carrier statistics exactly is. It is a basic formula which explains the distribution of electrons in conduction band and holes in valence band of semiconductors at thermal equilibrium. As I just explained, we are going to find out the equilibrium carrier statistics for intrinsic and extrinsic separately. So in today's video, I have tried to cover the intrinsic semiconductors first. So today we will be discussing how to derive carrier concentration with respect to intrinsic semiconductors. So let's start. If you talk about intrinsic semiconductors, you can say for every excited electron which moves to conduction band, there is a hole which is created in the valence band. We know that when we give energy to electrons, they move to conduction band and correspondingly a hole is created in the valence band. So I say for each and every electron that is moving to conduction band, there is a hole which is being created in the valence band. And so we can say the total number of electrons in the conduction band is equal to the total number of holes in the valence band. What I am trying to say is Ne is equal to NH that is density of electrons in conduction band is equal to density of holes in the valence band. This particular equation holds true if we talk about intrinsic semiconductors. So now let's find out how to derive carrier concentration in intrinsic semiconductors. Number of charge carriers per unit volume of a material is known as carrier concentration. So the meaning of concentration is how many charge carriers in a certain volume are present. So the first diagram here is shown the temperature we have considered is 0 Kelvin. You can clearly see from the diagram that valence band is filled up with electrons and you can see that conduction band is empty. Why? Because if you talk about semiconductors, there is a forbidden gap in between. So all the electrons are present in valence but conduction is empty. Just see the diagram. I have considered open-ended bands from both the sides. To derive the equation we have considered that valence band, the lower limit is minus infinity. Similarly, if you talk about conduction band, the maximum limit we have considered is infinity. So lowest of conduction is EC, maximum we do not know, we have considered infinity. Similarly, lowest of valence we have considered is minus infinity and maximum as EV. And in between them, there will be Fermi level present. Now let's see what is the situation if the temperature is greater than 0 Kelvin. You can see the temperature greater than 0 Kelvin, electrons have moved to conduction band. And you can clearly see in this diagram that Four electrons have moved to conduction, so four holes are created. Hence, we say that Ne is equal to NH. Now, let's start conduction, uh, density of electrons in conduction band. How do you find out the number of electrons per unit volume or how do you find out the density of electrons? Carrier density in a semiconductor is obtained by integrating density of states, ZEDE. This is a topic we discussed in electronic materials. We know the equation of ZEDE, so we have to find out what are the available energy states and then we have to multiply it by the probability function. How many energy states are available and what is the occupancy of these, what is the probability function of these energy states. Suppose there are 1000 energy states and out of them if we say 800 are filled up, so I can say 1600 electrons are present because one energy level can have only two electrons. So this is how by multiplying DOS and probability function we find out density of electrons. Let's see what is the what the equation means. We have Ne is equals to integration of E minimum to E maximum ZEDE into F of E. 
where ZEDE is known as the DOS and SE is known as the probability function. Let's move ahead. To find the density of electrons in the conduction band, we consider the bottom of conduction band as EC and the top of conduction band as infinity. This is with respect to the diagram I just discussed. Next, the density of states for an electron with an effective mass ME star is given by. Now, why do we consider ME star? Because we had considered with respect to chronic Penny model, there is a periodic potential and that is the reason we consider effective mass and we denote it as ME star. So, this ZEDE is equals to, now this is the equation of DOS we had derived in the chapter electronic materials. So, ZEDE is equals to pi by 2, 8 ME star upon x square raised to 3 by 2 into e raised to half DE. This is the equation of density of states. Now let's see, at the lowest level, we know that the lowest level of conduction is EC. Minimum energy of electrons is definitely, uh, we are going to consider with respect to EC and not zero. Because if an electron is present in the conduction band, its energy would be at least EC or more than EC. So in this above equation, equation number two, instead of E, we can write E minus EC. Because the energy of electron will be either EC or more than EC. Why? Because the conduction band starts from EC. Moving ahead. Probability function of an electron is given by Fe is equal to 1 upon 1 plus E raised to E minus EF upon KDP. This is the standard equation based on the Fermi direct statistics. Again, we had studied in electronic materials. So, the equation number 2 and equation number 3 can be combined. But before that, what happens? For any temperature, energy required by an electron to move to conduction band should be greater than KBT. If temperature is increased, only then your electron is going to move to the conduction band. So, in this equation, I can say that the energy would definitely be greater than KBT. That means, the numerator would be very large as compared to KBT. So, the exponential term will have a greater value if its numerator is higher. And if the exponential term is having greater value, in the denominator we can ignore the term 1 because you know that 1 plus infinity is infinity only. And so we have Fe is equals to E raised to Ef minus E upon KBT. How this equation comes? In this equation 3, I can ignore the term 1. So I have 1 upon E raised to E minus Ef upon KBT or I can say Fe is equals to E raised to Ef minus E upon KBT. This is the equation 4 we have. Substituting the equation 2 and equation 4, we say that Ne is equals to pi by 2, 8 Ne star upon x square is to 3 by 2. These are the constant terms, so we have taken outside the integration. Integration limits, minimum energy for conduction is EC, maximum is infinity, so we have integration of EC to infinity, E minus EC is to half, into E raised to EF minus E upon KBT into DE. Now, solving this equation, let us assume this value E minus EC in the equation to be X KBT. KBT actually denotes energy only. So, we are assuming that this E minus EC to be X KBT. And if we differentiate this equation, we can say, now in this equation E minus EC, I can say energy E is equal to EC plus X KBT. Or I can say DE is equals to DX KBT. Also, we are assuming something. The limits here will change. The limits change as when we consider E is equal to EC, we get the value of X is equals to 0. And when we consider E is equals to infinity, we get the value of X as infinity. So, in this above equation 4, E minus EC is assumed. The value of E is also defined as per E minus EC equal to X KBT and the limits have also changed. Let's see what do we get in this equation. We get Ne is equals to pi by 2, 8 Ne star upon X square is to 3 by 2 as it is. KBT is a constant term, we take it out. So KBT raised to 3 by 2 into, now we have the equation EF minus E. But that E also we substitute EC plus X KBT. And we take out the term as constant. And then we have integration limit 0 to infinity x raised to half into e raised to minus x dE. 
Now this particular integration using gamma function, we can say that the value of integration 0 to infinity x raised to half e raised to minus x de is equal to root pi by 2. And substituting this equation in the above, we get the value as ne is equal to 2, 2 pi ne star kbd upon x raised to 3 by 2 into the term e raised to ef minus ec upon kbd as it is. I have just simplified and written a, uh, written a direct step. I have just taken the term 8 raised to 3 by 2 common. And so what happens? The 2 in the denominator is cancelled out. And pi, and we have pi into root pi, so that gives me pi raised to 3 by 2. That also I have taken inside the bracket. So this is how we obtain for density of states in conduction band. Moving on to the second part of equilibrium carrier statistics, we have expression for density of holes in valence band. What do you mean by a hole? If I say probability of electron is Fe, I would say hole is absence of electron. So if probability of electron is Fe, probability of hole will be 1 minus Fe. So carrier density in a semiconductor is obtained by integrating DOS, ZEDE and probability function 1 minus Fe over all possible states. 1 minus Fe here because you can say probability of holes is 1 minus probability of electrons because holes means absence of electrons. Then we have NH is equal to integration E minimum to maximum ZEDE into 1 minus Fe. ZEDE will give us the density of states for holes and 1 minus Fe will give us the probability function of holes. Let's see how. To find the density of holes in balance band, we have to consider the bottom as minus infinity. We do not know the fixed value and the top is fixed that is Ev. So our integration limits will be minus infinity to Ev. What else we will consider? Now we know that the highest level of valence band is Ev. Your hole can be at the level Ev or a lower level than Ev. So instead of E, we will be substituting Ev minus E. Why? Because maximum is with respect to Ev. So it can either be at Ev or less than Ev. And the probability function of holes can be given as 1 minus Fe that is equal to 1 minus 1 upon 1 plus E raised to E minus Ef upon KBT. In this equation, to simplify it, we can use the binomial expansion. The binomial expansion of 1 plus x raised to minus 1 gives us 1 minus x plus x square minus x cube. The higher powers are ignored and the final expression will be 1 plus x raised to minus 1 is equal to 1 minus x. So using this binomial expression, the value of 1 minus Fe we obtain is e raised to e minus ef upon kbp. Now we got the equation of density of states. For holes, we got the equation of probability function of holes. We know that the energy is Ev minus E. Similar to the earlier derivation, here also we are going to assume Ev minus E as x kbt. The limits will change and then we have to consider the gamma function. So assuming all respective data, limits change and considering the gamma function, we can derive in the similar way expression of holes as expression of holes as nh is equal to 2 into 2 pi mx star kbt upon x square raised to 3 by 2 into e raised to e minus ef upon kbt. Now here mx star is known as the effective mass of holes and e is the maximum level of valence band. So similar to the earlier derivation, using all the steps we had discussed in deriving the density of electrons in conduction band, we can derive this expression for density of holes in valence band. Now let us discuss what is Fermi level and how it varies with respect to temperature. It is the maximum energy level occupied by an electron at 0 Kelvin. So to explain the concept, what we do is we have to derive the equation of EF first. What is the procedure of de uh, deriving the equation? Now we have just derived the equation of Ne, we have derived the equation of NH, how do you find out EF? If you remember, both the derivations had a term EF involved, that was in the exponential term. So what we do is, we are discussing for an intrinsic semiconductor 
and we know for an intrinsic semiconductor ne is equals to nh so sub we substitute the equation of ne we substitute the equation of nh cancel out the common terms and then we take logarithm so taking natural logarithm because we are dealing with exponential powers we get the equation ef is equals to 3 by 4 kbp ln of mh star upon ne star plus ec plus ev by 2 So this is the equation which we derive for EF of intrinsic semiconductor. Now let's see the variation. So in this graph, you can see temperature axis as x-axis, the energy on the y-axis. We ha I have shown in the graph zero Kelvin temperature. I have shown the maximum of valence band as EV, the maximum, the minimum of conduction band as EC. You can see holes are present in valence band, and you can see conduction band has electrons present. just consider the above equation just consider this equation if i substitute t is equals to 0 what will happen in the equation the entire term which has kbt will get will become zero because t is equals to 0 so in that case what will be the value of ef we get ef is equals to ec plus ev by 2 what does that mean ef is exactly in the center of forbidden gap just look at the diagram this is the value of ef exactly corresponding to t is equals to 0 kelvin but if you increase the temperature on the x axis if you are dealing with a temperature which is greater than 0 kelvin now what happens what will happen in this equation now the term t is non zero so how what what exactly is happen when you are increasing the temperature you will be getting a conduction more and more electrons will move to the conduction band from the valence band and this is how your fermi level will vary exactly at zero it is in the center of valence and conduction band that is in the center of forbidden band but if you increase the temperature the fermi level is going to increase so this is how fermi level varies with temperature if you talk about an intrinsic semiconductor so in today's video we have discussed what is the density of electrons in conduction band what is the density of holes in valence band we have derived the expression for the same and we have also studied the variation of fermi level hope you have understood all the topics i discussed today very well thank you